Welcome to DC Today. Uh, Brian Seitel with you here, and uh, it's Thursday, the 11th of 2024, and great to be with you. We had um, uh, really a flat day in markets. Futures were actually up. Uh, we have a, a we had a CPI number coming out uh, today, and I think in anticipation, markets were hoping it would, you know, be a certain way, come out weaker than expected. Um, markets sort of opened a little higher and then we got numbers out. We had uh, two things. We had jobless claims came out at 202 versus 210 expected. It's a little better than expected. Fewer people filing for unemployment, um, which is good. And then we had the CPI number that came out. So the core number was um, a 0.3% on the month. We were expecting, uh, uh, actually, co core on inflation on CPI was actually in line at 0.3. That's what we were expecting. It was headline that came out at 0.3. We were expecting a 0.2, so just a tenth higher than expected. Year over year on headline was 3.4 uh, versus 3.2 expected. So in line, maybe a little bit higher on, on headline core year over year was 3.9 versus 3.8. Um, I chalk most of this up to just in line and there's some variations with uh, goods prices being flat and shelter adding a little bit to it. But all in all, you know, markets sold off a little bit initially. Market Stock market was down a little bit and rates actually moved up. We had the 10 year rate over 4%. It was 4.06 if I recall early this morning. And then we ended up uh, coming off and markets sort of uh, regained some steam and we ended up closing completely flat on the day with the 10 year coming back down to uh, 397. It was down six basis points on the day. Uh, this, the yield curve steepened uh, just a little bit uh, on the day too. And my comment on inflation is that at this point, I get the month to month, you know, whether it's 0.1% different than expected or better than expected, that markets care about it and that they move a little bit. But the truth of it is that if you annualize the last three months, of where these numbers have come out. If you analyze that number, we're at 1.77% annualized inflation at this point on CPI. So it's below the Fed's 2% target, and that's including a shelter cost number in there that's that's elevated uh, still at this point. So I think we're there, and I, I, I frankly, I, you know, I think it's a little bit of a moot point whether we get a 0.1% beat or not beat uh, month to month. So. Um, again, the, the jobs number was good and that, that labor market continues to be quite resilient. And I think that's also a, a good thing. Um, there is, um, um, uh, Fed president, um, Mester was out talking a little bit about, while well, she thinks that, uh, it may be too early for a rate cut in March, um, that talks about the, uh, the balance sheet quantitative tightening, uh, should start sometime this year. Uh, she said they weren't imminent, but the point is just at some point they will start talking about that. And I, I really don't think another trillion is going to come off of that balance sheet. I think it, it'll be you know, counterproductive to be reducing the balance sheet at the same time they're reducing interest rates. Um, so I, I believe they'll talk about that. That soon could be the next meeting. The uh, futures, by the way, didn't move at all on any of this inflation data on the day. So Fed futures are still at about a 65 percent chance for a March rate cut. So there you have it on the day. And again, flat as a pancake in stocks. The NASDAQ was a, a, a completely unchanged at 0%. The Dow ended up closing about 15 points higher on the day. Um, I, I did put a section in there, um, at least a question that I got in the Q&A and on the Ask Brian section about um, some of the delineation between um, some of our uh, labeled asset classes inside of TPG. Um, and I thought it was a good enough question to, to add it in there for you all today, but specific to income generation, it was with regard to the difference between our credit sleeve, our income enhancement sleeve, and our boring bond sleeve. And I, I've described in there that they're all income generative, of course, but they're all very different. The reason we broke down the difference between credit and what we've called boring bonds is that there's just completely different asset classes. Yeah, they're both bonds. You know, it's fixed income. One of them has credit risk to it. Yeah, you know, there's default risk. There's a chance that you could, you know, lend that money and not get it back. And, and the credit rating for that is below investment grade. A lot of that is in the high yield bond market. Um, that is very different than going into the treasury bond market and getting, you know, I call it a 4% yield or so on tens and having 0% of default risk because the government has a printing machine. They're going to give you your, your dollars back. Um, 
you know, those two things act very differently in different markets, big market dislocation, you know, you'll get credit that ends up going to a correlation of one with equities, meaning it's going to sell off a, a similar amount because of the default risk there. And you won't get that in what we've labeled boring bonds. And while we used to lump them together, we've, we've removed that because it's important for clients to know the difference um, between those two things, even though they're both bonds. On the other side, we have for some people that need an income increase, maybe they're using it for living expenses, maybe it's just part of their goal, but we have an income enhancement sleeve, which isn't debt, it's equity technically. Um, although I'm not opposed to having some debt in it at some point, but the, the point of it is just parts of the income market that we can get a high single digit or even you know low double digit type of income yield for people that need that cash flow. And so we have things in there like BDCs, business development companies with low double digit yields, you know, a mortgage REIT, again, low double digit yields and things like preferred stocks, which, uh, you know, which, which have sort of that high single digit yield to it. So all very different, all, all income generative, but all, all uh, act differently in different markets. And, um, you know, from, from largest to smallest um, in yield, it'll be, you know, income enhancements followed by credit, followed by, followed by boring bonds. And it's the same uh, order if you were to look at just overall risk. In, in the paradigm. So all that to say, I appreciate you listening today on the market. Again, kind of a flat day here. So I don't have any, a lot, lot more information to give to you, at least on the intraday. Um, tomorrow, we do have some PPI data that's coming out and we have Dividend Cafe that'll be in your inboxes as it usually is. And of course, we have uh, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday on Monday. So with that, I'll let you go. Wish you all a great evening and take care. Thank you. Mm -hmm.